Hi friends, welcome back to Common the Chaos Homeschool. So today I'm going to be sharing with you sort of an initial look and initial planning video involving a guest hollow guide that I actually purchased a year ago because I got really excited about it, though we aren't planning on starting this until the upcoming school year. So I do like to look at these guides well in advance because they do take a little bit of planning on my part. If you haven't seen a guest hollow curriculum or guide, they come with a lot of resources that you can pick from. A lot of great living books, interesting books, a variety of different types of books. And this is covering a subject I wasn't super interested in teaching, but I do feel like is really important for my kids to learn. So I'm really excited about taking a look at this guide with you and just starting out my planning process for the subject. Today's video is a collaboration hosted by Stephanie from Schulte Sweeties and CJ from Homeschooling Through High School. We will have a playlist covering a whole bunch of different guest hollow curriculum. There's a bunch of people joining in on this collaboration, all people who really love to use guest hollow curriculum. So if you're interested in their curriculum and in the variety that they have, uh, they have stuff for like kindergarten all the way up to high school. Just um, a lot of different options for you. So I'm gonna link the playlist there below. Along with that, today is the first day of their biggest sale of the year. They like to have their biggest sale kind of in January after the Christmas crazies are over. So if you're interested in taking a look at Guest Hollow, I would definitely check out the playlist. And if you do see anything that you like and would like to pick up, I believe I probably picked this curriculum up myself last year during the sale based on the date that I downloaded this. So that is probably when I picked this one up for myself. I really enjoy Guest Hollow curriculum and I really like to support them as a company. And so that is sort of why we're putting this collaboration together. So check out the playlist when you're done watching this video to see how other people use Guest Hollow or what other options they have with yeah. Guest Hollow. So today the Guest Hollow curriculum that I'm going to be looking at is their government economics and personal finance that came out a year ago. So if you're new here and you don't know me, I homeschool currently for kids ages 11, 11, 12, and 15. So I am looking at this guide as something to use with kids who are in, let's see, they will be in 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th next year. And I will be doing a little bit of adjustment for that age since that is on the younger ages for this. This is a high school curriculum, but it will count as a high school credit for my two older girls. So I am also planning on starting this very lightly. The more that I homeschool, the longer that I homeschool, the more I feel comfortable adjusting timelines and schedules as far as when we start and finish curriculums. And my goal for this curriculum is actually to spread it out over the course of two to three, possibly even four years of school. So I don't plan on doing this full force in a year. And especially for next year, since my kids are still so young, I plan on just doing maybe one day a week and just get started on this. Now, you all know that election year is coming up next year, so that might be a bit of a factor in why I'm starting it a bit early. So I do want to get a little bit of the government stuff in there, but I don't expect my kids to know everything by the time elections roll around. Then as far as like personal finance and things like that, that's something I really want my kids to get. So I was really excited when I saw this curriculum that covered all those three topics. I'm going to turn you around pretty soon and we're going to be looking at my computer and at the guide that's on my computer here. I have peeked at this guide. I have not looked at it in depth. I was really wanting to save that look through with you. And I'm just going to be kind of talking through my thought process as I think about the upcoming school year and what sort of things I want to put together for my kids using this guide, just getting started with this guide. Okay, so this first page here, this is, so I have a few tabs along the top here. And so I'm just going to show you the different components that come with this curriculum. So the first one here is the main guidebook. So at the beginning of the guidebook, there's going to be a lot of information about how to use Guest Hollow's curriculum. 
and join their Facebook groups. You can join whether or not you use their curriculum and it's a great place to ask questions, how you can split up the credits. So something like this, there are going to be probably at least a half credit for geography, economics, and then a half credit for personal finance. And of course, it's up to you on how much you do of each of those. Honestly, if you do everything, you could probably do a credit of each. I will just see how things go and see how much we use of this guide to decide on how many credits to assign my kids. So they just have a lot of information here at the front. So I'm not going to be going through that, but if you have any questions about guest hollow curriculum, definitely let me know. So here it talks about the base program. So the top is going to be the more important thing. So the yellow, orange, green, and blue sections of the schedule are the base program. The idea is below, the pink section are extras. If you only accomplish one thing during the week, you should do what is in the yellow and orange sections. These sections are the base of the base. All right, so yellow and orange are the top two here. So they're just telling us that those are the most important ones. And then after that, really with Guest Hollow, they provide so much information and things that you could use that um, I feel like if you try to do everything, it would be very, very, very overwhelming. So don't feel like you have to do everything, even if they call it the base program. This is a tool to help you. And they say that all the time. It's a tool to help you to adapt to your own home, your own homeschool. They just give you a lot of options so that you can just really personalize your homeschool for your kids. And then there's extra resources and activities. And knowing us, we are probably going to be very picky and choosy when it comes to any of this. We are not going to be doing everything or close to everything, but I'm still really excited because they really do provide some great options when it comes to the books, some activities, their YouTube videos have been really great. Um, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but we have used or are using actions and reactions. So that is a elementary slash middle school, more elementary science. We have or are using junior anatomy, which is also elementary slash middle school science. We have been using the high school geography with my kids for over a year now, and we've really enjoyed that. And so this will be a uh, fourth one, um, I'm actually planning on using the chemistry in the kitchen with my seventh grader. She'll be in eighth grade next year as one of her credits for high school science. And we are looking at their whirlwind world history course as well. So you can tell we really love Guest Hollow and we use a lot of their curriculum in our homeschool. So if you want to follow along, follow along with us and see how all of that goes. But we have used their curriculum for a while now and we really enjoy, anytime they come up with something new, I really like to get my hands on it to see what's inside. All right, so then they give you suggestions on the books from the library. I'm not sure if this is their suggestion, but I probably would say if you're gonna use it for more than two weeks, you probably wanna find a way to pick up the book. There are different ways to do that. They also provide a lot of options on where you could find the book. Can you find it on Open Library, which is a free library, online library, or can you get it on Scribd? I believe is now called Ever, Ever And. Um, I'm gonna link my link below of that. We have been using that and I really have been loving that. So getting audiobooks and things like that on there has been really great. Yeah, so they give you a lot of options as far as how you can do this more inexpensively, but you probably will have to buy some books. So you would want to budget that in this program. Okay, so then they always have a section talking about using this program with a middle schooler or less mature high schooler. So they say they prefer you wait until high school to do an in-depth study of government and economics. But there are some things they might suggest for a middle schooler. I'm probably going to be using more middle school or I would just be picky and I might be jumping around a little bit in this guide, just depending. We're just getting started on this. So I'm hoping the beginning of this guide is a little less weighty than towards the end of it. Okay. So here they talk about how they organize your options for books, especially. They have one for books that are absolutely necessary, two that are highly recommended, Number three, it's optional but recommended. And four, 
optional but less important than others. We often just stick to the ones and twos. And then the threes and fours I might pick up if it's something I really think my kids would be interested in. But just to make guest hollow curriculum manageable, uh, we often just stick to those ones and twos. So now we're in the section where they talk about all the books that they use and what it's recommended or the ranking on this. So the first thing they have is Guest Hollow's U.S. Government Free Online Textbook. So I'm going to say that we have been using their online textbook for geography, the high school geography, and that has been one of the best textbooks as far as readability and interest um, that we have used in our school or in our homeschool. I rarely use textbooks, but when I was reading those to my kids and now my two older girls are doing it on their own. It's just the way it's written is very easy to understand and approachable. And then every few paragraphs, there's a YouTube video that illustrates the point that they're talking about. And so that really breaks up the reading really well. So that is something I really, really enjoy about their online textbook. As you can see, it is free. So you can actually have access to this textbook just online. So I'm going to actually click on that to give you a look at what it looks like just so you can get an idea of what one of their textbooks looks like. Okay, so here we are. It's online, obviously, so you would just click on chapter one. All right, and then here we go. So there's a vocabulary here at the beginning, and that is actually one of these tabs. I have, let's see, here, this tab here. This comes with your PDF download when you purchase the guide, vocabulary cards for the online government textbook. And so here are all of the vocabulary words that you will use throughout this course. So that, and then it tells us what chapter it comes from as well. So that is one of the things that comes with the guide. And so now down here, we have the outline of what we're learning in chapter one. And then, so like I said, there's gonna be a few paragraphs here. There's learning objectives. And then we'll go down to a bit here. All right, so that's a bit more words than normal like or from the past books, but here we go. There's a YouTube video to watch. You read a little bit more. There's another YouTube video to watch. You read a little bit more, another video to watch. As many textbooks as I've seen, that is how these are set up. So this is kind of a look at the textbook here. Okay, so let's go back to the guide. So that would be a number one, obviously. And then they also have a workbook that would go with it. So here's a look at the workbook. And same thing, we have used their workbook for just the high school geography so far, but I really do like their workbook. It is not too dense where it's overwhelming. It is colorful. It has little Beowulf there their little dog in there. So for a little bit of fun and he talks once in a while. So there, there he is right there. But the workbook's not too hard to fill in. You can tell that they took time coming up with good questions. They're not just pointless questions. And you can see that there's a lot of variety on the types of things that they're asking for. So I really like that about guest hall curriculum as well. So that's just a look at the very beginning of their workbook. It is 130 pages long. And then the last tab here is their answer key. So they do have an answer key. All right, so I'm going back here. So let's see, next book, Lessons for the Young Economist. Economist, there we go. Ranking three and four for normal or regular students. Number one, if your student wishes to go into economics field as an adult. Two, if your student is in 11th to 12th grade. And so that is not a book that we will be doing because it sounds like it would just be a higher level and none of my kids are gonna be super interested in this book. So we're not gonna do that. So that's how I kind of go through and decide. So not doing that book. The economics book, Big Ideas Simply Explained, ranking four. Probably not gonna pick that one up. It's optional and it's a ranking of four. But I do like these books. Like, And you can click on these links and it will take you straight to the book so you could find it on Amazon so you know what it looks like so you can start researching it. Okay, so we probably would not do that book. How Many Works by DK, sounds great. I love DK books, it's a ranking of two. So what I would do, and I love books like this, I love the DK books, 
that look like this. So what I'm going to do now in my planning, I'm going to start a document and I'm going to start tracking all the books that I want to purchase for this. So actually I already started one. Let me just pull it up here. I started one for the other curriculum that we're using this year. So chemistry in the kitchen and whirlwind world history. I already started one. So let me go find that tab. Okay, so I have a table set up here so I can just start adding the information. And like I said, I really am just planning on doing a day a week. So that's like 36 days of this. So really just starting this. And so 36 days, that is about seven weeks. I'm gonna plan, honestly, I'm gonna plan six weeks of this. So just the first six weeks to spread out over the year. And then as my kids get older, I can speed it up a bit. And I think I was saying that as I homeschool longer, I'm getting more and more flexible, changing how I do curriculum. And I think this is more of a Charlotte Mason way to go to be doing different strands of the same. So like social studies, instead of just doing one thing of history and that's it for your social studies for the year, maybe doing one day of economics, one day of like world history, one day of American history, and then just spreading it out over the four years. I'm feeling more like that, or maybe like even a geography day. So I'm feeling more like I am more inclined to do that in my homeschool, to do just a variety of things, touching on many different things throughout the years, instead of just focusing solely on one aspect. And I just feel like there's a lot of opportunities for the in information to become integrated together so that you're not just keeping things so compartmentalized. You have just more of a range of things that for your kids to draw the connections between the different subjects or different strands within each subject. So that's sort of how I've been doing my homeschool more and more. And as we're entering high school, I don't feel like I need to change that. So yeah, that's what we're doing. And that's why it looks a little differently around here. Okay, so I have that set up ready for me. I'm gonna go back to here. So generally, I'm just gonna copy and paste and get these onto my spreadsheet. And I'm always going to include the web link so I can find it easily. And eventually, it'll be time for me to start researching and looking for where I would like to pick these up, which might be another, another thing to add here. Okay, so that is used for, and I love that they tell you when they're using it, one through 35. So weeks, one, two, 35. So that would be an important one to own. All right, so back to the guide. Okay, so the infographic guide to American government, a visual reference for everything you need to know. Two to three, good for a visual learner, and use multiple weeks. So let's just take a look at it. I try to be realistic in what we will actually use. So I like to be able to look at images. So this is just, okay, this is just a, is this just a visual or is this a book? Oh, I think it is a book. I might have to do more research on that one to know if it's something I would want to pick up. So I'm going to put it on my list, but I'm going to put a question mark there on that one. So let me just get that on there. So as far as weeks, I'm just putting two to 35 and I'm just gonna add another question mark here. It means I wanna research it further before I decide if it's something that I would use. Okay, whatever happened to Penny Candy, I feel like that one pops up in a lot of curriculum. So I'm definitely going to add that to my list. Okay, the next one, the People's Guide to the United States Constitution, a reference book. So I wanna look at that. Okay. So I'm going to put it on our list with a, it is a one. So I'm gonna just get it or find a way to look at it. Yeah, so it seems like it's an important one. So I'm gonna stick it on our list here. And I'll go through and format it better later, but just to get it recorded. And that was weeks one, two, eight. Okay, The Fallacy Detective. I believe I own this book. So I own this book and this might be something I would do in my morning basket with all my kids anyways. I was planning on doing that next year anyways. So I might just use it in my morning basket 
or I might just use it when it comes up in Guest Hollow. So that is something, so this is definitely a book I would wanna use. Okay, so that is four weeks, five to 11 and 14. So weeks. So, I mean, if I put this in my morning basket, it'd be more likely that we got through it through the year. And if I put something in my morning basket, then I'll just work through it at that pace. And I'm not gonna worry about it when we hit it in the guide in Guest Hollow. So that will work for us. So let's see how to turn 100 into 100,000. That sounds like a very interesting book. And that was also a number one and it's week five to six. Sounds good. How to save and invest. So definitely excited about teaching my kids those sort of things. I think that is so important, personal finance. And so, like I said, I think pairing government and economics with personal finance definitely got me a lot more excited about teaching this to my kids. All right, so that comes up week five and six. All right, I'm gonna add some more tabs here. Okay, so next we have Teen Entrepreneur Toolbox. It's expensive, but may spur your teen into starting a small business. All right, let's take a look at that. So that is something I would be interested in getting regardless of if we were doing this or not. So I would probably pick it up and I may or may not use it this upcoming school year, but it'd be something I would want to have to just have ready. I would want to know if I need multiple copies for my kids, each of my kids. So I would wanna pick that up and just take a look at it. So let me just get that down here and I'll just be sure to pick it up next year for next year and we'll just see if we use it or not since it is week six that it starts and I'm really only planning for six weeks. So we will see about that. All right, please ignore the weird colors because I'm not gonna go through and format right now. Okay, so that was that. Now choose from one of the following two books, rankings two. And then they tell you why they have these books. I love this. I love that they have political fiction, dystopian stuff. I'm really into those kinds of, I like books about like dystopian books. So they have 1984, the graphic novel, and 1984, the original book. Seeing my kids are on the younger side, I would probably do the graphic novel or I would read 1948 to my kids. I know there's some parts that are probably, I think I listened to it or read it pretty recently and there might be a few parts that I would wanna skip, but I would definitely want to pick one of these two and put it there. That being said, we are now onto week seven and eight and seven and nine. So I don't think I'm gonna plan that far. Maybe I will, maybe I'll plan up to week eight just to make sure we have enough. Though I don't think that's going to be a problem. So let me take a look at these two books. And if the graphic novels at the library and then I get the book, I don't know. I don't know which one I would use, but I am excited about having things like this. So let's just say I put that on my list. I'm gonna go ahead and do that in a minute but I, I wanna continue on here with the rest of the guide to show you what else. Okay, so let's say I'm planning up to week eight. And so then we're just gonna have all these books to look and choose from. I'm not seeing notes on where to get these. Sometimes they have notes, I guess they don't in this one, but I will take a look. I will take a look at our parent partnership program, which is the library that we are, like the public school that we go to some things with. I will take a look at our local library I will take a look at Open Library and I will take a look at Ever and because I have access to all of those. And then I will decide which I need to pick up for myself, which I can borrow from our like public school library, which ones I can get from just our public library if it's only a week or two, and then which things I can get online or as an audiobook. So I'm thinking that a lot of these will be great audiobooks. But a lot of the programs I do like to use the audiobooks to go along with what we're doing. All right, so they have pages and pages of stuff here, and I'm not going to be going through all those. They have scheduled videos. So these are, I believe, more like DVDs or video, full length videos. So there are videos that you could look at or find. And like I said, they always have a link 
This one I think I watched recently, Borrowed Future. It's by Dave Ramsey. It's on YouTube. Something I wanted to show my kids anyways once they were a bit older. So a bunch of options here, The Hunger Games. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to maybe rereading those. And I know my seventh grader, she will really enjoy The hung Hunger Games once she, I don't know, I'm just waiting for her to be more interested in stuff like that. But I think she would really enjoy it and it'd be fun to read it with her or read it alongside her and have some discussions about some of the parallels we might see in modern day world and what happens in the Hunger Games. So I'm pretty excited about that. Other items, they suggest the Catan board game, winning game moves, payday. So a few other games here. And then here they have a quick list here. So you could just photocopy this if you wanted to have a list of books that you would be looking for. And then here we have some resources to go along with these books. If you're reading this book and you wanted to do like a literature guide or something to go along with it, they have links here. So those are available as well. Whenever I look at their guides, I just get more and more excited. Okay, so then they have supply lists by the week. So if you're making homemade granola, what you're gonna need, how to mend your clothes, beef taco pasta, so like I said, they always have such a big variety of things just because you're learning government economics and personal finance doesn't mean you're not going to be cooking or, you know, it's up to you if you want to do it or not, but they always have additional activities here. All right. And then they're reminding us here, it's a buffet. You don't have to do everything, right? There's printables. I rarely do the printables and things like that. So we'll see how things go there. Okay. So here we are finally here at the guide. What would you be doing in a day? And like I said, I'm just looking at weeks like one to six, maybe one to eight for all of next year. Just a taste of this course. And then, yeah, we'll enjoy it for several years. So they tell you what to read in their online textbook. So that's that here. So that would be day one. And then lessons for the young economics. Like I said, I will not be doing that one. My kids are not in 11th and 12th grade and they're not interested in this. I don't think it's gonna be super interested in this. So we are not gonna be doing that. They have a manual or a guide if you want to go along with that. We will be doing whatever happened to Penny Candy. So that would be a chapter a day there. And then they have workbook activities. So I would probably be doing this with my kids. I'll decide on how I want to do this. I might do this with my girls since they are a bit younger, um, go through the textbook and workbook with them just this first little bit. And then I may or may not include my boys. We'll see. And maybe they wouldn't do the workbook and the girls would. All right. And then these are extra activities. So play this board game, iCivics Foundation. So you would have to go through and click on these and see what is interesting to you. We rarely do a whole lot of the extra stuff, the stuff in the pink. What we do do though is the videos. I will, before we start the year, I will go through and I will put all of these videos onto a playlist and just have it ready to go. We often watch videos during our lunch. So when we're eating lunch, I will pull up a guest hollow playlist of one of the curriculums that we're following and we will watch a few videos. So. I will definitely be putting these on a playlist and doing that. I will probably add some full length videos on there. And then here we go, reference books. So if I purchase the reference books, for example, how many works, we would probably take a look at that during our lesson. So that one we would have, that one we would have, I'll have to look at that and see if my kids could handle it or if it'd be too dry. So it looks like it's optional. So I guess we'd have to take a look at that and I probably would not be printing any of this off. So that's what a week looks like here. So it's just a few chapters here in their online textbook. I won't be doing that. I will be reading that. So a book, then some videos. That's what that looks like for us. And then week two looks like we have a few chapters here or a few sections in the textbook. And then we would be doing the workbook pages for that. And then this here, if we got that, then we would have the infographic guide to the American government. I think that's probably pretty important. I will probably pick that up. Then more of whatever happened to Penny Candy and then extra printables and stuff. I probably won't do, but I probably will do a lot of these videos. So that would be week two. 
And then, like I said, if we have some of these, we might take a look at those together as a group. Week three, that is, yeah, so that's looking like that is how our first year will go using this curriculum, just touching on a few things. So as you can see here, we have government section, we have economics and personal finance section here, and then down here, it looks like a mix of different things. So it'll be a mix of all of those things together. But yeah, I feel like this is very doable. The number of books I'm gonna pick up for this doesn't seem crazy. Here we start the fallacy detective. So I would just throw that in to our homeschool at certain points. Yeah, and then I might pick up the study guide for the fallacy detective. I would just take a look. So they always have links here. You can just open them up and take a look. Okay, so here we go. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so summary. Do you re regularly exercise your mind? Do you do it willingly? Can you apply what you learn to everyday life? Okay, you just have to take a look at their resources and see if that looks like something you would use in your homeschool or not. And really, I found the more you homeschool, the more you just really need to go with your gut as far as what's going to work for your family, what your kids are going to enjoy, what you're going to enjoy, what your kids need to be maybe pushed a little bit more to do, and what is really okay to just skip. So yeah, okay, so then there's like activities down here. And what I've found is usually towards the end of a week or so, I might go through and pick a few activities. I would just look and see like one or two activities that my kids might enjoy or one child might enjoy something and another child might enjoy something else. And I would definitely be focusing more on my older two girls when it comes to doing the additional activities. My boys would just be sort of coming along for the ride. Who knows, like maybe in a few years, they'll be ready to do this again and get more out of it. And I may or may not do the textbooks with them, maybe just some of the books, just depends. And really, I'm just going to plan like I am going to do it with all of them. And if we get started and it's not working with the younger two, then we'll just separate the girls apart from the boys and that'll be fine. The boys will have other things to be working on. Basically, those PDFs are what comes with the guest hollows, geography, economics, and personal finance. It's a taste of what it looks like and how I'm going to be using it with some kids who are on the younger side. So I hope all of that was helpful. Don't forget to give me a like if you like videos like this. And don't forget to check the playlist below to see a whole bunch of other guest hollow curriculum like, I don't know, look insides. I don't know what they're going to do. They're going to talk about different curriculums and either how they're using it or give you a look inside or things like that. So definitely want to check that out. Don't forget to check out Guest Hollow. They are having their big sale this, I'm not sure how many days. It's going to be maybe at least a week. So I think, okay, I don't know. I don't know how long their sale is going to be, but I just know it's starting today. So take a look at that. I will link stuff below talking about that. And yeah, so thanks so much for coming today. I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye everybody.